and let's take a look at the SCR, the silicon controlled rectifier. The schematic symbol for the SCR is pretty much the same as that of a conventional diode. We still have the anode and the cathode, but since this is a controlled rectifier, we have a third element, which is the controlling element. Well, in the transistor, we call the control the base, but in the SCR, it's called the gate. And the gate lead may be seen drawn as coming out the right side of the symbol or coming out the left side. Let's put the SCR in a circuit and see how it operates. As long as the SCR is turned off, no current flows through the SCR at all. However, when the SCR is turned on, current will flow from the positive terminal of the battery through the lamp and through the SCR and back to the battery. When the SCR is turned on, it behaves like a normal diode. And since it's pointing the same direction as the current flow, the lamp will be lit. Let's take a look at the actual demonstration circuit itself. Notice that the gate, which is the middle lead of the SCR, isn't connected to anything. Unlike the transistor, which requires a small amount of voltage on the base in order to turn it on, the SCR is actually operated by a small amount of current. So sensitive is the gate that I can actually turn it on by simply touching my finger between the gate and the anode. Notice that the lamp turns on. And notice too that once the SCR is turned on, it stays on. Notice that the lamp is staying on now. And it stays on until you break the connection. Just like that. SCR failures are generally pretty straightforward. And here's a typical type of thing that you'll see when you have a bad SCR. In this case, the lamp is staying on all the time. And even if I break the connection to the power circuit, which normally turns off the SCR, as soon as I reconnect it, the lamp turns right back on again. So this SCR is always on. It has a short between the anode and the cathode. SCR specifications are the same as those of conventional diodes. Yeah, right. Voltage and current. Um, now, we... Uh, We don't really use SCRs much anymore at all. In fact, I, I, I honestly can't think of anything in a current piece of equipment that uses an SCR. Where they were used almost exclusively is in the older Bally pinball machines. There were SCRs for every lamp. All the lamps in the game were activated by SCRs. The cathodes were go to, go to ground. Here, I'll draw a slightly less confusing ground. There we go. And the gate was connected to the computer system. Whenever the computer wanted to energize a lamp on the play field, it would simply send a little bit of juice out to the gate of the SCR. That's called gating it, gating the SCR. And, uh, and then the SCR would turn on and it behaves like a diode and since it's pointing that direction, the electric current would flow from the power supply that powers the lamps this way through the lamp, through the SCR and to ground and it would light the lamp up. Well. Troubleshooting these things is pretty easy. There's not a real transistor type test that I can show you on this. Not really. The only, the only, in fact, the only junction drop you get is from gate to cathode. But it isn't necessary. It was never necessary to test the SCR because if you had a lamp that never lit up, the SCR was bad. If you had a lamp that stayed on all the time, the SCR was bad. That's all there was to it. I mean, that's the only thing that ever failed in the circuit, and that's, uh, it was so simple that you'd go, oh, that light isn't lit up. You look in the schematic, it said that this was hooked up to SCR number five, and you change SCR number five, and it would work. Well, we don't use these anymore, but we use a similar type of device, and there's nothing in your book about this device because, uh, well, to be quite frankly, I just to be quite frank about it, I haven't had time to really write about it. 